Hey everyone, over the last few months, Indian stock market has rallied a lot and already touched all-time high. Now at this point, while majority of stocks are trading at expensive valuations, there is one particular sector that is struggling due to multiple headwinds. It's chemical sector. And due to that, many chemical companies have corrected significantly. So I'm keeping a close eye on top companies in Indian chemical sector and today I want to discuss the fundamentals of one of the finest chemical company in India. It's SRF Limited. While I was going through SRF Limited shareholding, I observed an interesting pattern. If you look at three years of SRF share price movement, its share price jumped exponentially during COVID bull run and touched a high in January 22. But it's been nearly 18 months since SRF share price has been consolidating and currently trading in the range of 21 to 2200. Now interestingly, its PE ratio has touched a high of 53 during peak in January 22, but since then it has consistently fallen and today SRF is trading at a PE ratio of 33. During the same period when SRF was consolidating, domestic institution investors have consistently increased their stake from 8.7% to 9.37%, all the way to 14.92%. Although there is a slight fall in latest June quarter, but it's only because FIs have increased the stake in SRF from 18.5 to 20%. And during the same period, weak hands of public have consistently sold stake from 21% to currently at 15.7%. Now I always say that if weak hands of public are selling and institutional investors or promoters are buying, then there's an opportunity in the company. Might not be in the near term, but certainly in the long term. And needless to say, Indian chemical sector is well positioned for multifold growth in coming years. And SRF, being one of the leading players in its sector, is looking very attractive at current levels. In fact, recently SRF has declared its Q1 result. So I thought it's a good time to discuss SRF in detail. So in this video, we'll look at the business model of SRF, its future growth prospect, key risk and valuation. Needless to say, this video is only for educational purpose and not a stock tip. All right, let's get started. So have you ever wondered what is the full form of SRF? Well, SRF stands for Sriram Fiber. It was named after Sir Sriram who was a big industrialist in 19th century. He even founded the prestigious Sriram College of Commerce in 1926 and Lady Sriram College for Women in 1956. Later his son Bharatram took over the business empire and founded SRF. And as the name suggests, Sriram Fiber SRF started its business as textile manufacturer in 1970. Later, in 1989, it diversified into chemical business and eventually renamed to SRF. Now, SRF business is divided into four segments. Chemical, textile, packaging film and others. Its chemical segment is divided into two subsegments: fluorochemical and specialty chemical. Within fluorochemical, SRF manufactures ozone-friendly refrigerant along with pharmapropellant and industrial chemical. Here please note that SRF has successfully transitioned from CFC that is chlorofluorocarbon that was harmful for environment to HCFC which is comparatively less harmful for environment and then to HFC which is much more environment friendly with lower GHS that is greenhouse gas emission. So SRF is a leader in HFC and among top 5 global manufacturer of fluorochemical products. Not just it's a leader in India so it's a top 5 player in the entire world. Then second segment is specialty chemical where SRF has expertise in fluorine chemistry along with active and non-active advanced intermediate used in agrochemical and pharma industry. Now SRF is also involved in custom research and synthesis for major player in agrochemical and pharma sector. So overall chemical sector contributes the most in SRF business. We'll look at the revenue breakup shortly. Then second segment in SRF is technical textile. SRF is the largest manufacturer of technical textile in India. Its products include your tire cord fiber, then belting fiber, then industrial yarn that is used in tires, seat belt, conveyor belts, and other industrial application. SRF has 40% share in India's nylon tire coat market and second largest player globally. SRF is also the third largest manufacturer of conveyor belting fabric in the world. Then third is packaging film segment where it manufactures plastic film that find usage across your sectors like FMCG, then food and agro, then confectionery, then soaps, detergent, solar panel, labeling, overwraps, so on. Fourth segment is others that include your coated fabric, laminated fabric, and so on. Now, if you look at the revenue contribution in FI23, SRF generated a total revenue of 14,881 crore, out of which chemical segment contributed 7,411 crore, packaging film contributed 5,183 crore, 
Technical textile contributed 1,894 crore and other contributed 393 crore. In terms of EBIT, that is earning before interest and tax, company generated EBIT of 3,194 crore and within that chemical sector contributed highest with 2,341 crore which is nearly 73% of total EBIT. Then packaging with uh, 556 crore, technical textile with 262 crore and 35 crore with others. In terms of application by end sector, SRF serves customer in 86 countries with clients across auto, pharma, air conditioning, manufacturing, food and agriculture, then renewable energy, lifestyle, decor, agrochemical, FMCG, regeneration, technical textile and so on. Now if you look at manufacturing facility of SRF, within chemical sector its plants are in Rajasthan and Gujarat, in technical textile it has one plant in MP, three in Tamil Nadu, in packaging it has one plant in Uttarakhand and two in MP. It also has three international plants for packaging in uh, South Africa, Thailand and Hungary. In laminated fabric it has plant in Uttarakhand and coated fabric plant in Tamil Nadu. Now if you look at the financial performance, in last five years company's revenues have grown from 5,589 crore to 7,100 crore then 7,200, 8,400 all the way to 14,870 crore. That's almost three times growth. And company's margins have also consistently improved from 16% to 18, then 20 and directly shoot up to 25%. Although in FI23 margins have slightly reduced to 24%. As a result, company's operating margins have also shoot up from 996 crore to 1297 crore, 1455, 2133, then 3103 and latest at 3529 crore. So operating profits have also grown almost four times. So profit growth has been fantastic. Now if you look at the profitability, company's ROE and ROC has also improved consistently and both ROE and ROC are well above 20% which is great. Company has been consistently generating good cash from operation that has increased from 678 crore to 896, 1300, 1700, 2100 and latest at 2902 crore. Now if you look at the fixed asset, it has consistently increased from 5,000 crore to 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 and latest at 10,000. That clearly shows SRF capability has increased significantly over the time that would eventually be reflected in its top line and bottom line. Currently, SRF has a debt to equity of 0.43 which is well under control. So overall, the financials are looking solid with good business growth, high profitability, high cash flow and reasonable debt level. Now, if you look at the leadership, as discussed before, SRF has a long history where it was founded by late Mr. Bharat Ram in 1970 who was the second generation member of Sri Ram family uh, that has legacy of over 100 years. Currently Mr. Arun Bharat Ram, the third generation member of the family is the chairman emeritus of SRF. He is the person who transformed the family run business into a world class conglomerate. Today company's day to day operation and strategic decision are taken by his two son Ashish Bharat Ram who is the chairman and MD and Karthik Bharat Ram who is the joint MD. Ashish Bharatram took over as MD in 2007 and appointed as chairman in 2022. He joined SRF in 1994. He holds a degree in economics from Delhi University and an MBA from Johnson Graduate School of Management, Cornell University. So currently SRF is run by the fourth generation of Sriram family. For more details on leadership, you can explore their website. Now let us look at the future growth prospect. Now future growth for SRF can be divided into near term and long term. In the long term, we all know the immense growth potential in specialty chemical segment of India. Global players are building alternative supply chain to reduce their dependency from China and India would hugely benefit from this trend. As mentioned in my previous video, Indian chemical market is roughly around $150 billion, whereas Chinese chemical market is 10 times of India at around $1,500 billion. So even if 10% of Chinese market would shift to India, it would double India's chemical market. Now within chemical, specialty chemical with niche application would grow at much faster rate. And within specialty chemical, fluorine chemistry is rapidly gaining traction. In fact, in one of the latest reports by McKinsey, they have placed fluorine chemistry in highest market attractiveness segment. So below is the market attractiveness scale where fluorine is right there. Basically, fluorine chemistry is getting very popular due to its much cleaner chemistry as compared to other specialty chemical in uh, pharma and agrochemical segment. In short, the long term growth prospects are looking bright. But we all know that in the short term chemical sector is struggling. The key reason is weak global demand and inventory rationalization. SRF has recently declared its Q1 result and overall the performance has been subdued. Its revenues have fallen by 14% year on year and profits are down by 41% year on year. Having said this, that chemical business is still doing reasonably well in spite of multiple headwinds in global market. For instance, their specialty chemical business has grown by 
although fluorochemical business has been impacted due to mild summer in India, leading to sluggish demand for refrigerant gases. Moreover, we all know that pharma and agrochemical sector are facing slowdown that has adversely affected the demand for some industrial chemicals. Now, in future guidance, management has mentioned that chemical sector can see weakness for next two quarter and then situation can improve. So, chemical sector overall outlook is still positive for FI24. But the major factor for 41% fall in profit is due to sharp fall in their packaging segment where EBIT margins have fallen from 20% in Q1 of FI23 to 5% now. In fact, all companies in packaging segment including your Polyplex, Uflex, Jindal Poly are struggling badly. Moreover, their technical textile segment is also struggling with margin pressure due to cheap import from China. Now, going forward, SRF is focusing on growing its chemical business. In FI23, SRF has commenced huge capex of 2,800 crore mainly in chemical business for setting up new plants in agrochemical, then capacity enhancement of existing plant and setting up range of specialty fluoropolymer. In FI24, SRF is guided for capex of 3,300 crore and a total capex of around 15,000 crore between 2024 to 28. Out of this, more than 80% of the capex is for chemical business. SRF has a chemical technology group that is actively engaged in development of new process technology with focus on high-end molecules. In FI23, so far company has been granted 139 patents out of 408 patents filed. In fact, Management has mentioned that SRF is becoming more of a chemical company. So considering the bright potential in fluorine chemistry and refrigerant gas and SRF leadership in the sector, future growth prospects are looking bright. Now let us look at the key risk. So first risk is volatility in raw material price. Raw material is a major cost component for chemical sector as well as textile and packaging film. So any increase in raw material price can negatively impact the profitability of the company. Although crude oil, which is a major factor behind raw material price, has recently seen correction, but raw material volatility risk would always exist. Then second factor is slowdown in N industry. Since SRF is into B2B sector, it has dependency on N industry. If there is slowdown in N industry, it can impact the growth of SRF. For instance, currently slowdown in agrochemical and pharma sector has impacted its revenue and profit. Then third risk is competition. SRF would continue to face challenge from both domestic and international market. For instance, in chemical sector, in India, its listed competitors include Naveen Fluorine, Gujarat Fluoro in uh, fluorine chemistry and refrigerant gas. Then in technical textile, its competition is from Garware Technical Fiber. In packaging film, it include your Polyplex, Uflex, Jindal Poly. And of course, there is competition at global level with strong dominance from China. Now currently SRF is trading at levels of around 2200 and commands a market cap of around 65,000 crore. Since the stock price has been consolidating for last two years, its valuation has fallen from PE of 53 to current levels of 33. Now at current levels, SRF valuation is looking decent. It is clearly visible from shareholding pattern where DIs are consistently adding stake in last four to five quarter. And even FIs have added shareholding in latest June quarter. And the weak hands of public have consistently sold stake in last six quarters. So looking at a long term bigger picture, SRF looks attractive at current levels and that is probably the reason why institutional investors are interested in SRF. So in this video, we discuss the fundamentals of SRF Limited. Company has a legacy of more than 50 years and it's among the global leaders in chemical sector as well as technical textile and has got a good presence in packaging film. Although company is very clear about its focus to become more of a chemical company which is clearly visible from its capex plan of 3,300 crore for FI24 and around 15,000 crore between 24 to 28. Financially also company has been growing at a very good rate in the last many years and has a top leadership that is run by 4th generation member of the family with nearly 100 plus years of legacy. Its share price has also grown exponentially in the past but the share has been consolidating over the last 18-20 months that has made the valuations attractive. Although considering the slowdown in the near term, there can be some correction in the near term. But for long term, SRF is looking attractive to consider adding in systematic manner. Now tell me in the comments, do you hold SRF in your portfolio? And what is your take on SRF? I hope you'll find this video useful. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.